Hello, it's John again. In this small video, I am going to explain what assembly variables and labels are about. Uh, assembly labels are what we call um, constants. That means that you are assigning a value to a name or term that you want to use within the assembly file when it gets compiled. This allows you to um, specify the label, uh, the variable in many, many places and only define it in one. So if you change the value of that constant, you only have to change it in one place. Now a label is a different type of data storage um, unit for within the assembler. A label defines what memory location you will you will use once the compiler is compiled. You can set uh, three different types of labels. You can set global labels, you can set local labels and you can set um, temporary labels. Now a global label is a label that will be used across all the assembly files within the project and they will be listed under the globals tab. A local label is a label that is used within the file that you are currently compiling and a temporary label is a, a label that is thrown away outside of the, the code block that you are using it in and what defines a code block is I'll explain later. So, for example, I've got a small assembly language program here. We set, we tell the assembler where we would like to start assembling to. So, this is a label in its own right, uh, 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 sorry, a variable in its own right. And if we look at variables, you'll see that it's, it's listed there. I've got a local variable called screen start location and I have got four local variables of different types so we have a binary type and a binary type is always preceded by the percent and then eight or sixteen zeros and ones um, hex is always preceded by the dollar octal is always preceded by the at sign now octal is where it counts up to eight and then make turns to ten and it's all it's it's base eight. Hex is base sixteen. That's why we have F because ten is uh, ten is equal to A, eleven is equal to B, and so on until you get to F, which is fifteen. And then you can have decimal as well, which is not preceded by anything. Now, if you wanted to make any of these variables global, you would just stick a dollar on the front of it, and that would then become a global variable and as you can see the IDE has moved it to the globals the project global variables so if we leave that there and change that one as well now a label here we've got a label and a label always starts at position zero on the row always if, he, if we move one of these to there, the assembler will think that's a label and if we look under the labels you'll see that TYA has become, it, the assembler gets a bit, a little bit confused. So always make your label start at column zero. Now a temporary label is always preceded by something it's by a non-alphanumeric character so like you could use an an at sign or you could use an underscore but I always use at and the scope of this variable is within a label code block so if we have another label here this at looper is only available within this code block so if we carried on having code here
the assembler would not find that at looper because it's not within this code block here because the uh, local uh, labels are only contained within a permanent label or sorry a, a temporary label is only um, found within the confined block of two local variables or two global variables so this line would not see that label if you wanted to use that label you would have to take the at sign away from it the beauty of this is you can re you can recycle labels within code blocks and you're not having to constantly think new new names yep so that's variables and labels uh, within a um, an assembly assembly program this program just basically puts the character 0 to 255 on the screen so if we run this now just to show you that it works works the top half of the screen will have just the uh, the normal characters there you go so it's from 0 to 255 right I will see you on the next video thank you